I hate seagulls. They are unpleasant things. They make a horrible noise early in the mornings. They destroy bins and steal from other seagulls, other birds and, on occasion, humans. There's a reason that you're not supposed to feed these things. I once hit one with a crunchy bar, but that's another story for another time. It wasn't too upsetting to find one run over on the road the other day. This stuff happens. But later on, when I went out for my evening shop, there was a very young and fluffy baby seagull stood patiently next to the dead one in the middle of the road, waiting to be fed. This made me sad. Half an hour later, I returned. I could smell burning even before turning the corner, where I found the baby seagull dead on the pavement with a black, charred head. It was not nice. Oh, and there was yet another baby stood next to it. You know when you feel guilty for not having done more, even if there was no way of knowing that something bad was going to happen? That was me at that moment. What had happened wasn't directly my fault, yet I felt some kind of obligation to ensure that the remaining baby didn't meet a similar fiery or squishy fate. This road's KD ratio was high enough already. Fun fact, seagulls are protected by law, because nobody else would do it. So I shoot it into a driveway just off the road and kept it there as I phoned the RSPCA and told them my very strange double seagull homicide story. They agreed it was a very unusual case, but seemed far more interested in the burnt dead one than the one that was still alive. They said that it was a high priority case and that someone would get back to me within the next half hour. So I waited. For two hours. Nothing happened. Had I given them the wrong number? Had they gone to the wrong place? Did they think that my whole story was a lie? It reached midnight and I headed home, tired and confused. I called them again when I got back and they pretty much said, yeah, we got your case, but nobody's doing anything with it. And when I asked if they would, they were like, we're aware of the situation. So in other words, no. Thanks, RSPCA. They could at least have told me this in the first place. The following day, I went back to check on the baby, which was indeed still alive, but had chosen to live in the middle of a three-way crossroads, hobbling out of the way of cars as they passed. There were several close encounters, even as I was watching it. I felt horrible and felt that I would be solely responsible for not doing more if it got run over. But seagulls have one redeeming feature. They care about their young. And luckily for this baby, there was an adult one looking after it. Maybe the remaining parent. Day after day, I returned and sure enough, the baby was still there, waddling about with the parent getting super angry if anybody approached it. They're not afraid to dive bomb you if you get close. I started going out there with sardines to lure it off the road and into a safer side place. I got dive bombed a lot, but luckily my plan worked and the adult happily fought off other seagulls and fed the baby. I got to see the baby develop. First it would be fed sardines directly. Next, the adult would just pick it up in its beak and would let the baby peck at it. And finally, the baby began to eat it off the ground itself. And then one day, it was gone. I did check around to make sure it hadn't been crushed into the pavement somewhere. And it wasn't. I can only assume it was the silly young one that I saw trying to balance on a TV aerial on a roof a couple of days later. And now I'm back to hating the old seagulls again. And the next time a seagull shits on you, remember, it could have been sponsored by me.